Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Ultimate General Civil War as we fight through the uh, Civil War from the Union perspective, fighting the grand campaign in the new game uh, by Game Labs, uh, Ultimate General Civil War. This is the same developer that made Ultimate General Gettysburg of 2014 fame, and they've also worked on a Naval Action which is a very different game, which puts you in the shoes of a naval captain in a sort of uh, age, age of Pirates game uh, in the Caribbean. With that being said, guys, we are deep into this campaign fighting as the Union. We've just won the Battle of Harrison's Creek, which is sort of the first uh, part of the Petersburg campaign. It's not called the Petersburg campaign. It's called the final campaign or the Richmond campaign. But in effect, it was to represent the early period of the Petersburg campaign when the Union Army blew a golden opportunity to win the war uh, earlier, or at least take Richmond earlier and outflank the Confederate Army of Northern Virginia, which, which was further north. In this video, we will fight the Battle of the Georgia Railroad. This particular engagement is to simulate the continued efforts of the Union Army under General uh, Meade, but really under the direction of General Grant, to outflank the Confederate forces during the, the Siege of Petersburg. There were a series of actions and battles as the Confederates continually tried to, or actually the Union, continually tried to turn the Confederates out of their position, try to get astride these critical railroads which are riding in from the south, which were continuing to provide a bare subsistence for the Confederate Army of Northern Virginia and the Confederate capital in Richmond. The Georgia Railroad is, I assume, meant to simulate some of these later battles where the Union finally did achieve some success in uh, flanking and driving the Confederates back, destroying railroads, and crippling the Confederates' ability to hang on to Richmond, and eventually forcing them to retreat from Richmond into the Appomattox campaign. Now, this campaign, I assume, ends in a grand assault on Richmond. So while maybe it would be logical if this battle is successful for the Confederates to withdraw from Richmond, uh, the final battle after this one, if we're successful, would be the Battle of Richmond. With that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and jump in. This is from a live stream from a couple of weeks ago, and this is my fighting of the, the Georgia Railroad battle. So I'm going to go ahead and duck out, and I'm just going to kind of turn it over to myself uh, from a few weeks ago. Feel free to leave comments and thoughts below. We are closing in on the conclusion of this series. Uh, I know we've gone for uh, almost maybe 60 episodes or almost 60 episodes now. So this has been quite a run by far the longest of any series that I've done. I will be doing a Confederate Let's Play, but I think I'm going to structure it a little bit differently with some more historical discussion, historical topics, maybe not quite as regularly posting, although I will stream through it as well if you want kind of that experience. With that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and duck out, as I've already said, and I'll turn it back over to myself. Hope you guys enjoy. Meet you guys back up at the end. Thanks, guys the Lorenz rifle. I feel like it's sort of the poor man's Enfield of like, it came before the Enfield. It was a pretty decent rifled musket that a lot of people don't really talk about. It kind of gets overlooked. It's kind of like the underdog story. In the beginning of May 1864, our army departed Chattanooga, Tennessee and continued further south. During our advance, we were confronted by the Confederate jo General Joseph E. Johnston, who continuously executed delaying tactics without giving a real battle. The Confederate forces withdrew along Georgia Railroad toward Atlanta, giving us ground to surround the city and build the entrenched positions. One of our corps is needed east of the city to control the Georgia Railroad. According to our latest reports, General John B. Hood has replaced Johnston in command of the besieged Confederate Army. Hood is known to be an aggressive commander, so all of our forces have been warned for a possible Confederate attack. Alright. I have played Crisis in the Kremlin, Ari, uh, I can't pronounce your name, and I have a couple of videos, two or three videos on the channel of Crisis in the Kremlin, uh, where I had no clue what the fuck I was doing, because the game doesn't do a very good job of explaining to you what you're doing. Alright, start. General, our scouts report that a Confederate force is heading to our trenches. We need to deploy our men and repel the attackers. Hold your position at all cost, or the Confederates will be able to reopen the Georgia Railroad and receive valuable supplies. All of our troops are behind our positions. Oh, no, some of them are forward. 
Um, alright. Well, let's move these guys over here, and these guys over here, and these guys over here. Some artillery. Hmm. Your brigade's there. We'll need to deploy... I want to put some Spencers for it here, too. I'm not quite sure where I should really set up. I don't know if the earthworks are great or if the, the woods would be better in this case. Alright, so... Go ahead and start and then pause. Get some of these guys into these entrenchments. I think the entrenchments is where they want to be. Um, where are those skirmishers? Here they are. Put these skirmishers in the woods here in front of the position. Meanwhile, along this line, we'll get the rest of these guys kind of in their defensive works. Doesn't look like there's any artillery defensive works. Just kind of leave these guys. They're a little bit more in the open, so they should be good to, to hit. I'm wondering if this house up here has some good entrenchments as well. So these guys are moving there, we'll move here, here, these guys moving to these houses, here. I'm just trying to keep our guys in good cover. That's kind of my, my main concern is to keep our guys in good cover, because that seems to be the most important uh, piece in this battle. If they're in good cover, from what I've heard, is they'll be fine. The issue is there is some cover in front of our positions, which could make holding our positions a little bit more difficult. I'm actually going to put Ross up here in the woods. We'll put M. Beal back here. <sighs> cover bonus, 100. So it does look like the cover bonus for these entrenchments is 100. All right, everybody's getting in their entrenchments. Our skirmishers are in these woods in the front. Play some additional skirmishers from Nelson's Brigade to these woods. Pleasanton, get some troops here. Put Hoke up here in these woods. You probably should be behind the line, but we'll put you over here. We're attacking our right, so we'll pause. You can see here the rebels actually several brigades here on the right. So we'll move support in. These guys are a little bit more exposed. The Iron Brigade will be kind of a central reserve. I think our repeaters are out. Our repeaters are not in fortifications here. So on the right they are, you can see they're moving up in the center as well. Damn, the whole rebel army is attacking us! Alright, pull back there. I don't want you dying. I'd rather you be in these woods though, that would be great. Okay, some more rebels are coming up. You can see here Stral, they're just kind of charging forward. We pulled some of these hoods. Ross's brigade was just losing too many men for not really a lot of gain. Go ahead and we've got like a little salient over here too. Actually, it would probably be ideal to move some artillery here. 
if not some, a lot. Because this is, again, this is a bit of a salient. Let's go ahead and move the Irish Brigade in behind these guys, too. Alright, so a general rebel charge, it would seem. Meanwhile, we've got some Spencer repeating troops here as our skirmishers. Run away! Through heavy cover. Alright. Okay, so we're with standing the rebel attack here. We've got some troops in these uh, woods that are delaying some of their attacks. We've even got a, a whole brigade here located in one wood line. We get 15, over 15,000 troops, I think, as our reserves after this battle. So if things don't go well, or, you know, if we lose a lot of casualties, even if we win, we'll have plenty to replace our losses with. But these sort of forward speed bumps, if you will, or these three brigades are held up by just 200 skirmishers here. And uh, meanwhile, Car Carter's brigade's been driven back by Baylor, who's, you know, done some decent casualties here. I don't know why Bates' the skirmishers lost so heavily. They're being targeted despite being behind the lines. Let's go ahead and pull them out that way. I don't want them to be the target of anyone's attacks. We've already lost almost 100 men. And those guys have uh, Spencers. Run away! I should have done a fallback, but either way, they're pulling out. Alright. Glory is a very good movie, in my opinion. I'm sure some some of you will find this not terribly entertaining or be, I don't know if offended is the right word, but kind of be pissed off. I was talking to a friend about, you know, I'm not going to wade too much into the politics, but about sort of the, you know, the, the desire of many to maintain Confederate monuments. Um, and he made the statement that we should take all of the Robert, and again, consider he's from Wisconsin, so this is a bit of a northerner take. But he said we should take all of the Robert E. Lee, Stonewall Jackson monuments, replace them in, with Grant and Sherman monuments. And he said the middle of Atlanta should have a giant statue of William Tecumseh Sherman that would be at least 20 stories tall, would have its arm overstretched of the city, and it would have an internal flame burning in the middle, like in the middle of it exposed so you could see it, with the words transcribed less or we shall never forget basically like sherman with his arm and i'm saying this because this battle is supposed to take place in the in the atlanta campaign um basically saying that like the union should just own the fact that it you know sherman just demolished the city of atlanta yes he was joking francis This was in a moment of jest and alcohol consumption, so believe me, he was not being serious. Alright. <laughs> Pleasanton skirmishers, you're retreating the wrong way. And Pleasanton himself is, is getting beat up a bit there. But again, he's tying up five brigades. He just needs to make sure he gets out of there before he gets destroyed. Hoke's skirmishers are all dead. That's fine. Alright, Pleasanton, make sure you retreat to the right place. Confederate cavalry charging Springfields again. It's a bad idea, guys. You're not gonna, you're not gonna get very far with that. But all right. 
Pleasanton, let me pull you back. I want to I wanna get you out of danger here. I want to pull you behind the line. Oh, God. Hector. Don't get shattered too much. There you go. Inflicting casualties on the rebels. Die, rebel scum. Alright, um... So far things are going well. We're holding our own. The enemy's not really getting all that close to us. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward a bit. Vaughn is wounded, but, you know, these things happen in battle. We flank the rebel attack on the right. In the center, they're just... They don't have the manpower to overwhelm these brigades that are like multiple times their size. Iverson could probably pull out a little bit. We'll do that. Probably should not have turned his back, but he didn't lose any men in, in the action. More skirmishers being driven back. Hogson's brigade is deployed. Pleasanton. Black hats, get over here. Fly wagon, go this way. Give that artillery some additional ammo. Two more hours of just lines blazing away at the enemy. And the enemy being in relatively open ground and us being reasonably well entrenched. And the artillery, Allen's artillery brigade keeps charging the Springfields. Uh, alas, to no, no real hope of success. Let's see if Caldwell and Hector can flank the enemy. I'm always good at being a little bit over aggressive. I hear ya. I mean, I'm not sure tearing down statues is the best way to go about it. On the flip side, what I will say is that. It is kind of weird that we live in a country that has a number of monuments and this sort of mythologi mytho mythological viewpoint of the losing side in a civil war. You think, I mean, it's just kind of weird. Like, we've got all these monuments to what, in effect, and I'm not saying, you know, anything about them personally, but at the end of the day, you know, Lee was a traitor, right? And what other country has a monument to trade? Could you imagine communist... No, they're not really communist, but... Could you imagine China having monuments to Chiang Kai-shek? Or Vietnam having monuments to the United States of America or South Vietnam? Or South Korea having monuments to Kim Jong-un? I mean, it's just... Again, it, those may not be the best comparisons, but it's just kind of interesting. Like, it's just, we, we live in a weird country. Scotland, yeah, but didn't Scotland kind of win their independence-ish? At least for a while. I, Francis, there's no doubt that Lee was a phenomenal general. I'm not disputing that. The Lost Cause is kind of an interesting idea, though. If only because, like, think about all the wars in history where countries that had even worse odds than the Confederacy had, and they won. And yet, the South makes this sort of idea that it was impossible for the South to win. That's kind of the idea of the Lost Cause, which to me just seems a little bit, you know, disingenuous. No, there's no such, in my opinion, there's no such thing as an unwinnable war. Wars can be unwinnable based on the tactics you, attack, you, you pursue those wars with. But the war itself could have been won if, if different... You know, things had occurred. Alright. Tontos, we're a nation of rebels. Does that mean we're rebel scum? I'm just thinking Star Wars ish. Alright, 41 more minutes. Just have to kind of keep holding them off. So far, so good. So far, so good, General. I don't think we lost, by the way, anywhere near. Eh. So we're almost 10%, which would be, what, like 4,000 casualties? So, so far, 
This fight's going well. I think the main concern's probably got to be ammo, right? We'll pull our supply wagon out, hopefully while it still has some ammo. Use what it has left to help reinforce some troops in the north. If not, we can always swap some of these troops out. I feel like for having a brigade with a th almost 2,000 soldiers with Spencers, they've been kind of underwhelming with their performances. I don't know if I've been kind of babying them or... This thing is almost out. Bro, I'm sure the South would say that it was based on power structures. Um, I mean, I know I've already made a video of my view that the Civil War was fundamentally a war over, over slavery, and that most of the divides between the North and the South could be boiled down to the fact that the South was more, de more not exclusively, but more dependent on slavery than the North. All right, 4,000 casualties. We inflicted 16,000 on the Confederates. Uh, we captured a bunch of weapons, not as many as you would maybe like, but a good amount of weapons. Um, really not much in the way of artillery, but that makes sense because we weren't on the offensive. Uh, what did we, we captured a lot of Texas Tylers and Harper's Ferries, uh, some M&Js, that's about it. Some pattern Enfields, which we'll go ahead and sell off right away. Officers, Major General Marion Vaughn was wounded. Uh, Frank Hodgson and Hector Dunshin were promoted to Major General, and we lost Brigadier General Roger Reed to being a casualty. Uh, we accomplished all of our objectives, and everything in the remotely top half were all positive for Union forces. We gained 225,000 more supply, or, or sorry, dollars, and 21,000 more recruits. We have 55,000 recruits. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. 55,000 recruits to draw from. That was a pretty easy battle. Uh, let's go ahead and get these casualties replaced though. Only 30 Spencers. So we're going to have an understrength Spencer Brigade. so few casualties and a reasonable amount of money, I'm kind of tempted to just say, all right, we'll just do all veteran replacements. But that would be foolish. Let's go with Texas Tyler's for you guys, so we can... Uh, Texas Tyler's better than our Lorenz anyway. And then we can free some Lorenzes up for some of the, the units that do have Lorenzes, so they can replace their losses. All right. Beal... Going with mostly rookie replacements. We lost one gun here. Yes, sir. Oh, nice. They gained their first first trait. Reloading time doesn't matter. Stamina efficiency speed. Morale and efficiency. Morale, I think, and efficiency. Just so we can keep these guys at near full strength. Yes, sir. These guys just became a second star, by the way. And... There we go. These guys need to be maxed out. Yes, there you go. These guys need to be maxed out. There you go. Max out. There you go. Max out. There you go. Both veterans. So still over 400,000 soldiers when we replace our losses. Or $400,000 when we replace our losses. Assign some generals here. Mostly brigadiers, I think. Even the artillery needs a brigadier, unfortunately. Um, so the first this first corps is now forty two thousand men, the second corps is forty one thousand men. We've got fifty two thousand men and four hundred thousand dollars in reserve. We could pull twelve thousand more recruits or two hundred thousand dollars more. We currently have eighty three reputation, which gives us a big hefty fat 
uh, morale boost. We've won all the battles in the Richmond campaign, which reduced the rebel army in both mor morale, equipment, and soldiers. They've got 65,000 men. We have over 100,000 men. We could have as much as 150,000 men for the final assault on uh, Richmond. In addition to that, we're going to go with logistics because that's going to have the biggest impact on this particular battle. You can see here that our starting ammo supply will go up 5%, uh, which will also help in that battle. Additionally, some of you have recommended we go to 35,000 supplies in our, our cores, which would be the maximum amount, but we've got the money. It's only a couple thousand dollars to do that. So we will go ahead and max everything out at 35. That looks like one of our guns we need to go ahead and replace casualties with. All right. So we'll need to build out the third core and equip it. We've got a bunch of generals here or colonels or major generals or whatever that can fill out this third core. I think we're going to have a full third core, a full first core. We may bump some of these units up to 2,500 men. Probably just go to battle with three cores, uh, but it should be a, a good size army. You think the campaign will end with a defeat? How would you lose the war with all of those victories if you lost Richmond? I don't know, but we're going to try and outnumber the Confederates very heavily. All right, guys, and that's going to do it. I hope you're... Uh, I hope no one's... Uh, outraged at my joking around uh, again the friend was joking about some statues as far as what could be put up but um, with that being said guys we are on to the final battle the final uh, culmination of this entire series this entire campaign the battle of Richmond is up next with that being said guys we are going to go ahead and bring this episode to a conclusion and when we meet up tomorrow we will be fighting to win the battle of Richmond all right, guys, until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you for watching, and until next time, have a great one. I'm out.